I was already poor before I got into the music industry. I wanted to change that. And the only way I could change that, I had to have control or ownership. And so when I started researching the deals they have out there, I realized that Michael Jackson had the biggest deal. So I went to talk to Michael Jackson attorney. And he told me to sit down and talk to him, I need $25,000. Just, just to coach you, consult you. That's it. <laughs> so I started selling CDs out the trunk of my car. And I went to see him. I said, sir, I got the $25,000, let's talk. He said, well, the only deal you could get bigger than Michael, and Michael was getting like, I think, 27% wow. a record. He says a distribution deal. Well, you get 85% and the record company going to get 15%. But you're going to need $200,000 marketing money. I said, man, I just gave you $25,000 for you to tell me I need $200,000 <laughs> to get a distribution deal. But when I walked out there, that was the best investment I ever made. Wow. Because all I was thinking about, I need a distribution deal. I was no longer thinking of I wanted the artist deal. And so when, so knowledge, information, not being afraid to invest in yourself. I walked out of there, went selling CDs out of the trunk of my car. I told y'all consistency, right? And you weren't too proud to do it. I hit every city, every hood, every community selling CDs at $20 a CD. And then some of the places where I told you the insurance man would be at, where these guys had guns and was gang banging, whatever. I sold them ten dollars a CD. <laughs> like I got a seal for you, man. Here, ten dollars. And so fifty percent off. I end up saving up three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So and I got that. I got that from one of my grandmother friends, Miss Irene. She she uh she she was the A-bone lady. And so I watched her sell her A-bone out the trunk of her car, and I'd be watching her, right? She said, what you watching me for? You the police? I said, no, I'm watching you. I want to know what you be selling out your trunk of your car. She said, I sell my stuff, and it's legit. And so I started thinking, I'm going to sell my CDs. It's legit. And so I hit the whole country and saved my money up. I'm in the hood. I got 300. I'll be watching my money, hiding it, putting it up, and then I went and got the deal and I had to spend my own money for, for the marketing, for the distribution. How much does it cost you to make the CDs? I mean, think about it, right? Because we're talking about the late 80s, 90s, the yeah. 90s. So these CDs will probably get made up for 25 cent, 50 cent a CD. The record company end up selling it for 19.99. And so I was doing it on my own. I figured out if I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, I'll go print this stuff up myself and make it. But then the biggest thing in music is now, cause I'm going hit in every city, I need a distribution. And so once I got that distribution deal, I made more money in the record company. That was the year I made Forbes uh, top under 40. And, and nobody on the record label has ever done that before. Wow, yeah, make some noise, yeah. So. Are you, are you considered like the pioneer of going independent? Maybe, but you know the internet, somebody gonna say no, it was such and such, but maybe probably the most money made independently. I got my game, I want y'all to know, I learned the game from the Bay Area, I moved to Richmond, California, and that's where I opened up my, I opened up my record store there, so I learned the game in the Bay and brought it back to the South, and the rest was history. At that time, Tupac and Biggest Smalls was the biggest artist, and Tupac was putting records in my store on consignment and he didn't no. understood i mean he didn't under he couldn't understand that a distribution yeah well he didn't realize like man you 19 years old you own this store <laughs> i'm like yeah this is my store he's like man come on and so every artist from the bay will start coming to my wow. store because it's like man it's a young person that's thinking outside the box and they started support me and that's that's how no limit records built up into the community did you have like open mic? Did you have artists hang out in No Limit Records Man, store? Artists or? was coming from everywhere. To, to go there? To go there. And I was putting their products uh, on consignment. So this is before internet. This is just word of mouth. Just word of mouth. I had a nice car. Put my car in front of the store. People would stop and they want to talk to the owner and they see me, this 19 year old kid. <laughs>
And so it's nothing but God. It's a blessing because I got that store. I want to tell y'all how I got that store, right? That's why I say stay humble and stay hungry. Uh, I'm colorblind when it comes to business. Uh, I've never been prejudiced because it was a white guy that helped me. So I had no money. I only had $500 when I moved to Richmond before my grandfather, I got the, the, the insurance settlement to where they was able to give me to $10,000. But I was already open. I only had $500, but I was a basketball player. So I went looking because I seen this record store that sold like uh, gospel and R&B. I said, no hip hop? So I said, I always find a problem when I start a business. So I found a problem. They had no stores selling hip hop. And so I finally found a building. I only had $500. And I called the number. It was this older white man showed up. And, and he said, uh, well, what you trying to do, son? I said, well, I'm trying to open up a record store. He said, you have any money? I said, no, sir. He said, where you from? I said, I'm from New Orleans. He said, I'm from New Orleans, too. No. He said, what's your name? I said, Percy Miller. He said, a basketball player? No. I said, yes, sir. He said, what happened? I thought you'd be in the pros. I said, I got hurt, sir. He said, well, look, I'll tell you this. If you fix this building up, I'll let you have it rent free for a year. You could have talked to any landlord. You could have talked to any. That was a, that was a divine appointment. That's why I say when God has a plan Come for on. you, can nobody stop it. So, and you have to make the sacrifice. You have to put the work in. I stayed in the back of the store. So I was able to make up enough money with my family and get them into an apartment. So you, don't be afraid to take them steps and move and grow. Don't try to do it all at once. So I used to hide my car when I leave behind the back of the building. They think I'm going home, I go in the back of the store. So when people tell me they had it rough, man, I had it rough. I left the project. I had to sleep in the back of a store. I, I, I knew what I wanted out of life, so I had to make the sacrifices. But I told y'all about consistency. I kept my integrity. I kept consistency on the dreams and the goals. And every day, I put something a little bit in, even when nobody could see it, even when, when it looked like it wasn't happening. Even in the failures, I kept going when everybody else quit. And everybody told me, man, this is a bad idea. This is not going to work. I'm like, no, I'm going to build a real retail record store right here on this block in the hood. And that's what we did. No limit. It happened. It happened. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Make some noise for that. Okay.